it's an open source project which is part of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Vitesse was co-founded by uh, Sugu Sugumaran, who uh, and I worked together at uh, YouTube back in 2010 when we uh, started uh, started Vitesse. Since then, Vitesse has grown quite a bit, and Vitesse is now used in production by companies like Slack, companies like Square Cash. Um, I don't know how many of you actually know about these companies, but these are very popular companies in the United States that run really large workloads, Pinterest, uh, YouTube. All of these companies uh, use Vitesse. Here in China, uh, JD.com is one of the biggest users of Vitesse. They run, they run tens of thousands of nodes uh, on Vitesse. So I'm going to spend some time talking about Vitesse, um, the Vitesse architecture. But the two main points that I want you all to take away with uh, is that Vitesse is used for horizontal scaling of MySQL databases, one. And Vitesse is also used to allow you to run stateful workloads in, workloads in Kubernetes. As you all know, it's easy to run stateless uh, services in Kubernetes. It's hard to run stateful workloads in Kubernetes. But companies like HubSpot.com and Jerry.com have been using Vitesse to run databases in Kubernetes over the last two or three years. Vitesse is born to run in Kubernetes because Vitesse ran under Borg, which was Google's orchestration framework, which was the predecessor to Kubernetes. So because of that, it runs really well in Kubernetes. So what we are going to talk about first for about 10 or 15 minutes is why, and then I'm going to show you a demo of a truly globally distributed database. So Everything to the left-hand side of that vertical line is the application, which is talking to everything on the right-hand side using the MySQL binary protocol, right? Everything to the right-hand side is Vitesse. Uh, well, except the load balancer. You are running your own load balancer, but VTGate onwards is all Vitesse. And it gives your application the view that is talking to a single humongous database when in reality, it could be talking to a database which is very largely horizontally sharded with hundreds of replicas and so on. And not just one database like this, multiple databases or multiple key spaces with multiple schemas, right? Your application still thinks that it's talking to one humongous database, right? How does it manage that? So the very first component is VTGate. So VTGate talks MySQL binary protocol to app servers, it just basically presents itself as a MySQL uh, server to your, to your application. VTGate also has a full MySQL parser built into it. It parses your query, looks at the where clause, and decides which of the shards the query needs to go to. Okay? Then it sends the query you over gRPC to the VT tablet associated with the MySQL D to which it wants to send the query. Okay, it does not send it directly to MySQL D. It sends it first to the VT tablet. VT tablet acts as a guardian or a protector of the MySQL D. Every time there was a YouTube outage because of any reason, we built in protections uh, that would keep your databases alive in VT tablet. So what are the kind of kinds of things that VT tablet does? VT tablet does connection pooling. VT tablet uh, gives you hot row protection. It serializes hot rows so that you can, uh, uh, it serializes hot rows so that you can, um, your database doesn't go down if a single row is being updated. It also um, put timeouts on your queries and your transactions. Um, So it also puts timeouts on your queries and transactions. In general, anything that a conscientious DBA would do to keep your MySQL day healthy is done by uh, 
is done by VT tablet for you. Um, you uh, so that's so what, what is shown on the right hand side are four shards. Each shard has one master and multiple replicas. There are two types of replicas, replicas and big data replicas. You typically run your batch jobs against the big data replicas and the other replicas are candidates for becoming master. Okay. Um, one of the coolest things about Vitesse is that it does not make decisions about how data is sharded for you. It allows you to make those decisions based on your domain. So just the way you have uh, a MySQL schema, we allow you to have what is called V schema, where you describe to Vitesse how you want your data to be sharded. So what you do is that for every table you tell Vitesse, hey, shard this table using this particular column and depending on the type of the co column, we allow you to use a different sharding function so that the data is sharded uh, uniformly across the whole key range, right? So for numeric key types, it's hash. For var binary and varchar types, it's, it's a different type. So there are six different predefined sharding functions that, you, that we give you. But not only that, we also give you the ability to write your own sharding functions. And because of this, it's very easy to spin up clusters which are jurisdiction aware or GDPR compliant clusters using, uh, using Vitesse, okay? So this is a little bit about the architecture. Uh, now we will look at, uh, so one, one uh, thing that this diagram does not show is that for each of those shards, there is one master multiple replicas and those replicas can be distributed across multiple data centers. They don't all have to be in the same data center. And Vitesse uh, has this concept called cell and each replica lives in a particular cell. And we are going to, I'm going to show you a cluster where replicas for each shard are running either in US East or US West or in Asia East, okay? So I have talked through most of these points. Um, here is how Vitesse allows you to run well in Kubernetes, right? Stateless entry point to allow scaling, that VTGate is a stateless proxy. You can run as many of them as you want. Some people run VTGates as a sidecar to their application servers. Some people just run a farm of about 40 or 80 or 100 of them behind the load balancer, the way I had shown it in the um, in the application, um, in, in the diagram before. You can VTGate, you can use it to make sure that on, your read traffic is only load balanced across local replicas in local cell. You can even have a group of VTGates to make sure that only certain key spaces are visible and certain are not. So VTGate is a very versatile proxy. It's stateless, perfect for Kubernetes um, so that uh, so that uh, your applications can uh, connect to it. VT tablet is the MySQL minder that I talked to you about. Just your MySQL, so we run your MySQL D and VT tablet in two different containers in the same pod, and it just works really well. Your MySQL availability is really high. Uh, we support native backup restore, health checks and observability so that uh, uh, Kubernetes services, et cetera, know when a VTGate has joined the quorum and when the VTGate has gone down, all of that uh, is supported. And we end up pushing state to the edges. Um, the connection strings are in the application. So which key space, if you want read after write consistency, you just give the name of the database. So if the name of your database is user DB, if you give the name of the user database as user DB, you get writes and you get read after write consistency. If you say that my, the name of my database is user DB at replica, then your reads get, uh, then your reads get um, load balanced across the replicas, okay? So all of that you get. Um, and now let's jump into the demo. Let, let, let me show you what I'm going to show you today which is that I'm, we are going to run a global stateful Kubernetes application. I, get, I showed this application to some of you. You all can go, go here and check it out. It's basically an application 
for rating little puppies. And you can all go there, 34.80.128.130 slash puppers, and you can rate these. Uh, please make sure that you give them good, good ratings. They're all good dogs, okay? Um, so this is the application that we are going to talk about. Um, and I'm going to show you how, how this is organized in Vitesse. So we have created two key spaces, one called Doggers and one called, called Lookup. The Doggers key space has four shards. And if you click on it, you can see the, uh, these four shards. Look at how they are named. So the key space, if you take the hexadecimal key space, 00 to 40, 40 to 80, 80 to C0, and C0 to FF are the four slices of the key space. So that's how we name shards. If you click on each shard, you can see that for each shard, there is one master and multiple replicas, okay? And if you see uh, this second column, which is the cell, you can see that the master is in US West and the replicas are in US, some are in US East and some are in Asia One. So each shard is a truly global cluster, okay? Now, uh, if we, uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm gonna show you how this looks like if I connect to the VT gate um, through a MySQL client, okay? Uh, take a look at the interesting version string here. Uh, we kind of lie. This is the server, server version, um, which is a Vitesse 5.5.10. This, this is, you know, this is a blatant lie. It's not the, we, we are uh, running 5.7 underneath and you can give whatever connection string you want. But the point is that to your client, it's just presenting uh, itself as a MySQL, uh, a MySQL server. You can do things like select count star from ratings and select count star from uh, uh, doggers, I think is the name of the table, um, puppers. So it's, these are scatter gathers they are, that are being sent to all four shards. The counts are being sent back to you. You are not even aware that you're talking to a sharded database. Just wanted to show you that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a script for writing into this database. Um, okay. So this is going to keep running while I'm running this demo. And now we are going to abuse this database. I'm going to first delete a master for one of the shards and see what happens. Then I'm going to bring a whole data center down and see what happens. So the idea is that we will see some errors, but it will self heal without me having to do anything and the errors will go away. Okay, that's what uh, we are going to demonstrate. So uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is I am going to, uh, actually first, before I do that, I'm going to show you a planned reparent. So there are times when you know that you need to bring down a master. How do you achieve that? So um, you come here and you say, um, what I'm going to do is instead of this master running as US West, I'm going to choose this to be uh, the replica which I want to make the master. 9001. So I come here, I say planned reparent, I choose 9001, and I say reparent. And what is happening when this is running is that um, VTGate actually starts buffering the writes that are coming to this shard, and it uh, VT tablet associated with the old master waits until all transactions in flight are finished. VT tablet associated with the new master waits until all the replication logs have been applied. And then it makes that the master resets the replication for the whole cluster and then makes the entry into the uh, topo server in which all the information about the cluster topology is written. And then VT gets once they realize that a new master is there, all the queries that VT get has been buffering, they start sending them to the new master. The point being that your app never sees any errors, right? We continue to write these uh, into it while we plan reparent the master. Now we will do the same thing um, for another uh, uh, 
you will uh, will do the same thing for uh, another uh, cluster and uh, so that we have two uh, two in uh, us east because i'm going to kill us east um, okay uh, again uh, same thing we this continue to this is continuing to write correctly no problems um, now i am going to kill one of these uh, uh, um masters and let's see what happens you can see the delete pod command right i'm just going to delete that pod of one of the masters that we created what we should see is that we should start seeing some errors in the bit once that goes away Still thinking about it, still deleting. So this has been a little flaky. This was the one that I was using before. Yes, work fine. Everything else I can get to. So yeah, sometimes we have problems taking down a website. <laughs> so yeah, um, uh, I have had problems connecting to the Kubernetes uh, cluster. But let's see. Uh, so what I'm what I was trying to do is basically I was going to. Uh, so while while this is happening, let me show you what mechanism we use for making sure that this works correctly. So it's a, it's another open source uh, tool called Orchestrator, and that um, shows you um, uh, it is integrated with Vitess. And it shows you the cluster topology as it at as it thinks is uh, it is. So you can see that there are these four shards. This each has nine instances. Um, and if you look at the topology, you can see that uh, it it actually uh, shows you that here is the master, and then here are replicas in in two in in it colors them differently because they are in different cells. Right. So what I am uh, and th th I'm trying to do is I I'm trying to kill these uh, green replicas from all all of the clusters. By uh, I mean not not first at at first I was just trying to kill one of them, but I don't think that this is going to happen. But um, what we can do is uh, I don't know whether it's. Your, your hotspot. Sorry about these problems.
Okay. Okay, awesome. So the pod, we, we are getting paused. So I'm going to kill, I'm going to kill one of the masters now. Okay. So the VT tablet demo 701, that's, that's the master uh, that we saw. Uh, we, we, we had, uh, this is the master for the 4080. Okay. So I'm going to kill this now. And once that pod is deleted, uh, we should start seeing uh, errors here. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't have to restart. We should just start seeing errors here. Oh, uh, yeah, maybe this is. Uh, because we changed the. Yeah. Sorry, only because we're using uh, some Google Yoon, so not Ali Yoon or anything. Do you think you'll be able to control series? Dot tilde dot. So what we are trying to do is basically uh, show the errors. But I think what happened is that when we changed the Wi-Fi, uh, my SSH to the host from which I was running this died, and so this is not being updated. Okay, uh, now just up arrow. No, hold on. I don't think that that is okay. in the command history. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, give me one second. Okay, don't look at the screen now. We have all the secret information. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, everything was done at the last minute, just like everyone else here, right? What are you talking about? <laughs> so this is our super, super duper insert script. Um, I think I can take the password out of the command line parameters. Don't copy the password. Don't remember it. <laughs> and that, of course, doesn't work. Do you remember what we needed to change last time? So I'm just going to run it like this. No. Okay. Something went wrong. Sorry about these troubles. But uh, as we, yeah. Uh, so yeah, we're trying to right now take down a particular pod, hoping that uh, yeah, so we can the, see some errors. The thing is that that part, pod has already gone away. Yeah. And has already been repaired, so we are not going to see any. Yeah, I don't know why this is running. Our error is anyway doesn't matter. Running the so, load test. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just kill the whole uh, cluster. Um, uh, we, we can show in here that orchestrator 
recognized that it went down and it isolated it. Um, and even in Vitesse, if we go here, we can see that it is now the master is 7002 and not 7001. So this master was the one that was chosen and the right traffic was being sent to here. So uh, even though we can't continue to write to it, this is what was, what was done. Now I'm going to delete the whole cluster. Um, and now the whole cluster is deleted and you can see that orchestrator will soon start complaining about it and will fix it. So just to show you this, let me show you if I do a get pod here. Um, you can see that all these pods are in the process of terminating. Um, and you can see that um, all these instances are dead. And you can see that uh, some of the stuff is running, but all these pods are, are gone. Uh, but all of these uh, clusters in short order have now been re uh, reorganized. And you can see that they all have um, fewer, uh, so th these three are dead, so it cannot get to them. But there is a new master and there are replicas that it's, it's, going, it's writing to. So all of these shards have reorganized themselves and they are serving traffic. Um, so it's a basically resilient globally distributed cluster that is being mediated by Vitesse. Um, let's give it one more try to see whether we, the good as Doggo can actually write. Um, in the history, okay. Oh, I need to set MySQL, that was the problem. Um, how many minutes do we have? Uh, uh, six, six minutes left, okay. Um, just in case, we can start at, uh, having people ask questions uh, while we're waiting. Uh, does anyone have any questions so far? Okay. Uh, give me a second. How do you add or remove shards and does Vitus take care of moving over data when shard count changes? So the, when the shard count changes, it basically mostly either go, uh, we, we basically Vitess supports what is called split sharding or merge sharding both. You have to, uh, you have to provision new shards and then Vitess does the job of uh, resharding for you while continuing to serve traffic from the old ones. Um, first it does a stale copy, uh, then it does, does a, what we call split replication. And then it allows you to, when it catch, the replication catches up, it allows you to fail over from old master to new master. Does that answer your question? Yeah, and is the service available during that process? Absolutely. Yes, okay. that is the beauty of Vitesse. Uh, because of all the VT gates are serving all the traffic, you can 
choose to migrate just the read-only traffic, the replica, and then at some point, once everything is done, you can move the master traffic over. Does that make sense? Other questions? Yes. Sorry. Yes, uh, may I know how the uh, storage engine to support uh, the, the back end? Because when you, uh, for example, remove a, a, a shard, so how, how the other cluster to take over the, 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 the load and then continue to work with the, the, the data exists in, in that sh uh, shard? Uh, can you give me an example? Because, uh, for example, you just uh, remove, remove a, 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 a cluster. Uh, a a, a replica. So, so uh, for the existing data inside that 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 shard, yeah. how 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 are the uh, so when I remove the uh, when I removed replicas, when I removed a cluster, replicas from all shards which were in that cluster got removed, right? So there were always some replicas which had all the data, which were part of the serving quorum. So that's how it con it continues to. So I said. U.S. East, I just deleted everything in U.S. East. But there are replicas in U.S. West and Asia 1 were still part of the cluster and were still operating correctly. Okay. And what you. we do is, yeah, we, uh, yeah. Uh, does that answer your question? Yeah, got it. Great, thank you. Uh, any other questions? Uh, no questions? Okay. So c contact us at jitin at planetscale.com. Um, and we have a project where we want to translate all of Vitesse uh, documentation into Chinese and Roni He, who is one of our colleagues, is going to be giving a talk later today about that project which will allow you, which will translate all of Vitesse uh, uh, documentation into Chinese. Uh, we would love your help, so please attend that talk. Um, yeah. One more question. Uh, so I, I, I see that the defect is to a lot of the workload with the MySQL. Uh, sorry, can you repeat that question okay. into the mic? Uh, I see that's the VSTAT, uh, um, the makes a lot of the amazing thing in the MySQL. So my question is the, the, uh, um, the VSTAT, do have the VSTAT have the uh, plan to support like the Postgres? <laughs> for example, uh, it, it is it is on it the is roadmap, but not for the next at least not for the next year. So it's not that hard for us to support it because of the architecture. But what we need so there are two things that we need to support. One is the protocol that a, a Postgres clients talk with to Postgres server. That should be pretty straightforward. Then we need to extend our parser a little bit so that there are certain uh, uh, SQL syntax that uh, Postgres supports but MySQL doesn't. So we need to extend our parser to support that. That is the easy part. But the harder part would be the replication logs, the right ahead replication log that Postgres uses for doing replication. We need to start parsing that and doing the split replication that we need to do when we do resharding. So that is the hard part. Thank you. So there is a, about eight or nine months worth of work that is needed to do that. Uh, but right now our hands are full with MySQL, uh, but we will probably support it within a year to year and a half as our company planet scale grows. But in the meantime, if anybody wants to help, it's an open source project. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we only have 30 seconds left. If any last questions? Uh, if not, uh, Feel free to come outside and talk with us. Uh, we'll be right outside. And we also have a booth uh, at the hall. And at uh, 4.45, uh, we'll have the translation of documentation talk. In which room? Uh, in room, um, I think, 506. Uh, give me a second. Uh, we'll, we'll check and get back to you in a second. But yeah, uh, we'd love to have you here. Uh, yeah. Any other questions? So otherwise, vitesse.io is the website for Vitesse. Uh, there is a link for a Slack channel where you can join. There is also a, a Weixin group. Yeah, um, if you're interested, um, come talk to me and we, we can uh, get you on. OK? Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.